indigenous history in the area and uh, just getting people access to some nature and science education. Yeah, so that's where we are. And we just were on a ride. And what was the ride called? I don't remember what the ride was called. Well, so the focus of the ride, it's part of a series called Si Se Mueve. That is uh, rides that take people around the Highland Park, Northeast LA area and uh, call their attention to uh, the history of different places and probably changes that are happening, stuff like that. So this ride was led by Miguel Ramos, who um, is part of the collective LA Rooted that uh, does education around native plants and people getting reconnected to uh, the, the landscape, the natural landscape that's in our city. So we were biking along the Arroyo Seco and saw some um, native plant gardens and uh, Miguel talked about some of the recent um, clearing out of homeless people who had been living in the Arroyo that was done uh, in a really destructive manner. And uh, so yeah, so we were just kind of talking about the relationship between uh, different groups of people that have lived along the river and how we've treated it and how today, um, you know, people are really changing their perspective on rivers in this region. So all rivers in Southern California, rivers and creeks, um, are encased in concrete flood control channels. And um, this was, you know, thought to be a good uh, thing to do back in the mid 20th century, early and mid 20th century, because, um, you know, we have uh, flash floods and, and kind of um, inconsistent uh, rainfall in this region, as everybody knows. So, um, so we encased all of our waterways in concrete, and of course, that's had really bad ecological effects. So today, people are starting to follow the lead of groups like Friends of the LA River and try to um, think about how we could re-naturalize these river spaces instead of treating them like um, just sewers. So, um, but in the midst of all that change happening, we're also dealing with the fact that, you know, gentrification and a lack of affordable housing is such a big deal in Los Angeles right now. So I think people are watching really closely as we start thinking about river spaces differently and as they get developed, you know, who's going to benefit from that? Some of the stuff that Miguel was talking about um, on the ride. So this is a series of rides. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. This is the first one I've been on, but it's called Si Se Mueve. And so it's sort of a teaching ride. I think so, yeah. Well, there's there's a trend around the country of people starting to use group rides as um, a storytelling space and trying to kind of reclaim neighborhoods because of the gentrification and change that's happening in cities across the country. Um, so yeah, I just saw an article recently that was about a ride in Detroit that was really focused on um, you know getting people talking about the neighborhood. And um, people here in LA have been doing rides like that for a while. Um, you guys probably know better than me since there's been so many rides that have been happening for, what, like more than 10 years. What, like almost 20 years at this point? Not quite 20. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, it's cool that people are starting to focus more specifically on, you know, what is our relationship to this place that we're riding through and how are we part of what's going on here and what kind of history do we want to um, you know, be imprinting and, and sharing with people who may not know as much about it. I sort of think it was sort of all the social rights is sort of being dating back to around you know, the early 2000s. Yeah, right. People I've talked to, uh, well, there's there's a whole critical mass getting started in 97 here, 97, and then, um, uh, you know, the Midnight Riders get credited with really taking that to the next level and they got going what 2003 something like that I'm not sure but there was um were you guys here for bike summer bike yes. summer is a was a really big deal um, I, I wasn't around but I've interviewed people who told me about how important it was and so a lot of people I've talked to date that as like that's that's when things got going and uh, it just didn't stop it's like there was a month of programming and people just kept having a good time and uh, it's been rolling since then so that was what 2000 2005? Okay. And so you're like kind of a historian of what specifically? Well, uh, I'm an anthropologist and um, I have been doing research on the bike movement in Los Angeles since uh, 2008. And then for the last few years, I've kind of expanded that focus to look more at the national bike movement and um, 
you know, who are the movers and shakers in that, and what are the what are the barriers to getting more diverse participation in um, the bike movement? There already is a lot of diverse participation in the bike movement, but um, the movement has some very different arms in terms of you know who's doing organized advocacy, trying to impact policy, and who's just you know riding a bike with friends and considers themselves to be part of you know like a, a bike culture thing. Um, but yeah, so I, I have gotten to, over the years, interview a whole bunch of people who um, were involved in getting the LA County Bicycle Coalition started and um, have been a part of the development of bike life here. Okay, and so is this a category of ride? Are there categories of rides? Hmm, no, I've never heard anybody really talk about categories of rides, but um, you know, we could just come up with some on the fly. You have you have group rides that are more kind of like delinquent. You know, people are riding late at night. They're um, drinking booze. They're smoking weed. They're doing um, what is what is the midnight riders term for what is it? A bad idea ride. You know, people who are uh, going to go to four county seats on the same ride. People who are really pushing themselves to. Um, you know, cover as much ground as possible. So, um, so you have that kind of that kind of ride that's more, uh, let's say, rebellious in nature, and um, and then you have you know the the older model of bike rides where you have a bike club or a league, um, and people are training for races or they're just out having a um, an organized ride. So when I lived up in Seattle, there was a ton of that. There's a group up there called the Cascade Bicycle Club that has rides going every weekend and it's it's like a spandex lycra crowd and a lot of people who drive their bikes out to some starting point and then do a ride and then drive their bikes home um, and that's not a culture I ever participated in here in LA I know it exists there's definitely that kind of recreational cycling um, group ride stuff happening but I'm, I'm not familiar with it I'm more familiar with the group rides that um, have a theme or like a focus well like and and sometimes the, the what you're describing I don't know how you put the word for that is a lot of people just you describe their their outfits their spandex outfits yeah. but uh, there's they have a lot of um, theme rides about like today is the honor ride for veterans you know and, and there's a lot of things like that I think finish the ride is a little bit attracts that kind of rider right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they have a lot of rides for causes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, so so recreational cycling, you know, that refers to anything you're doing that's not commuting to work or running errands. And um, I think in the past, recreational cycling, and a lot of people still who are new to bicycling think that, you know, if they're going to do biking, they have to get a certain kind of clothing, get a certain kind of bike. Um, so I think a lot of those rides end up being entry points for people to uh, bicycling in general, because maybe somebody at their office is going to be doing the AIDS ride. And so they find out about that. But um, beyond that, I mean, there's a whole world of much more informal recreational cycling that happens now. And I don't know, really, uh, I think critical mass has a lot to do with getting that started um, around the country. But then there's, you know, messenger culture, which goes back a long time and people who are doing alley cats and stuff like that. So there's been a, a expanded universe of recreational cycling for a long time. but. Typically, when people say recreational cycling, they're talking about um, an organized, you know, club ride or charity ride where people are wearing the athletic gear and um, are focused on like performance and stuff like that. And then there's the term roadies. That's that's the term I would use. Those people are roadies. Right, roadies. Thank you. So much better. Um, all right. Anything else that you would like to tie this in a neat bow with or to uh, going forward? Yeah, are you, are you, what's your, are you, are you approaching this as a, as just a, a human being or is this part of your research? Um, that's a good question. Not that they have to be. Separate. Right, right. Well, see, that's the thing. Anthropologists, we, we blend, that's like, we live our, our research as ethnographers. Um, but no, today I was definitely thinking more about as a human being. Miguel is a friend of mine and, um, I haven't been on a group ride since I moved back to LA in September, so I was like, I need to make it out for this ride. And then I'd also said I was going to help out with this event um, here at Deb's Park, so I was like, oh, a bike ride that's going to end up where I need to be. Um, but yeah, having done the ride, I feel like uh, I would love to 
participate in more of these things. Hadn't really, I, I don't know, group rides are, as a, as a very confident um, bicyclist, sometimes group rides feel a little shaky to me because you got people who aren't necessarily that good at using their machines. And so I did have a couple close calls today where <laughs> other people's wheels were bumping into me and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a great ride. Was I was happy person? to be there. I, it was a couple people. There was there was the girl who was, I don't know, it's like she was doing gymnastics on her bike. Like she had something to prove, but she didn't know what she was doing. So <laughs> she kept falling down. <laughs> um, well, it's a good safe environment for her. Though. That's true. Yeah. Maybe she'll end up doing some cool tricks. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else? Uh, no, it was a it was a good ride. I'll probably do some of the other ones in the CC Mueve series. It seems like a uh, really good mix of people, different different abilities, and uh, I I love I love bike tours where you're just like stopping at different points and getting to hear a little bit about where you are and have some discussion. I met some cool people on this ride too, like a um, a professor who teaches at Loyola Marymount University who's been um, himself participating in Aztec dance for 21 years and um, also has been studying it. So he knows like everything about the the origins of, you know, when Aztec dancing moved up to LA from Mexico and, and who's been doing it and uh, what the what the politics are and, and all that. So I was like, wow, this, that's so cool that I get to ask this guy all kinds of questions about Aztec dance. Mm -hmm. Is there a website or something for this? The movie, the there dance? probably is. Let me look at my flyer. Your video go. Just you like chicken letter when it comes to video then? Am I, am I drawing you into the Here we go. The fourth walk? Okay. Okay, Si Se Mueve, Northeast Los Angeles, free community bike rides. Uh, for more info visit ccmueve.org uh, or you can find them on Facebook, uh Si Se Mueve, Northeast LA. And they're gonna have rides through April and May. Um, uh, looks pretty cool. All right, awesome. Thank you, Donia, for talking to us. Yeah, sure. Great to great to chat.